Friday night racing on Off the Ball. And they're off. Brought to you by Go Racing. Plan your day at the races at goracing.ie. Welcome along this uh, Friday afternoon or Friday evening. It depends on where you're consuming this. If you're listening to us on the radio and News Talk Fair Play, we're also live across all of our social channels on YouTube, Facebook and on Twitter. Our guest this week is none other than the Kildare legend, William McCreary. How are you? Good, thanks. Good, thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming in. No problem. Very welcome. We might not talk as much about racing as we normally do with our racing guests. We might just talk about... Uh our glory days, except this guy's from Galway, so... Which guy I don't see any of. There's only, there's only the two of us here. <laughs> Ignore him for the yeah, whole exactly. show. That we would be, good, be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. It'd be hard to do. Yeah, it would be hard to do. Yeah. He gets the old legendary moniker a bit too much, I think, now. <laughs> oh! Uh, I remember 98 being um, in, the, in a Galway victory, to be fair. You must have been about five. I was, I was doing my junior cert. Um, I remember watching the game in the old Canal End, and... Um, I remember watching it beside Mairead Meehan, um, who very sadly passed away, um, very tragically, at a, at a young age, would have been um, up from the famous Meehan family. And um, it was an incredible day, you know, because Galway, I don't know, there was something about that summer where it just seemed that the whole county believed from a very early stage that they could do it. And the Mayo game in Castle Bar was the start, but uh, I, I do remember we, we were really enjoying the fact that Kildare were 3-1 to one on leading up to the game, because everyone in Galway was like... We're not three to one shots in this now. We're, we were fairly hopeful that uh, just we had the forward. Shut up, Johnny! I've had enough. Mm. I've yeah. had enough. Yeah. Shut up. No, so you. we won it again in two thousand and one, <laughs> but we haven't done much since either. To be fair, um, but you were a very athletic player. <laughs> uh, you, you got up and down the pitch. And yeah, and I have a long reach, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Used to knee lads in the back as well uh, as needed be. Uh, um, but it, I actually watched the Miko the Miko documentary, and it was uh, kind of emotional seeing the the old the old comrades back together again and talking about the old days. Was it Anthony Rainbow was with you as well? Anthony Rainbow, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, and Carly's son, yeah, yeah. No, uh, that was a lovely piece done on Miko. I thought he was, you know, he, he was a living leg- still is a living le- legend. You know what I mean? He he did like he came to Kildare. We won nothing before or since he went to Leash. Leash won a Leinster, they've done nothing since. And he got Wicklow, I think, as the only game, first time Wicklow ever won in Crow Park was mm-hmm. under Mikko. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he was a great man. Um, like, very much like I've followed his role in training horses, you're either on the team or you're off the team. If you're not 100% fit and not ready to play or not ready to race, you, you don't want to know about them because they're on the injury list they're no good to him no good to you yeah. no no and the same with him you know I always uh, I know John Bannon who refereed the game quite well from racing and I do always thank him because he gave a decision for the goal yeah that was never a free you know the more you look at it um, Is it John, John Finnan overlapped yeah. to take the pass off Declan Kerrigan yeah and then it went the other way and, and they had the overlap then yeah, the goal. Yeah, it just it's small margins, you know. History is written by the winners, but um, you know. But I get Bannon back every time. Yeah, because I meet him racing as well. He always asks me to, for tips, <laughs> and I give him the little two fingers every time. <laughs> as I said, I, I still haven't forgiven. Now it's only it's only uh, eighteen years ago, is it? Twenty. Twenty years. Twenty years ago. 20 years oh, ago. You don't give him deliberate losers. That'd be even better. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The last time I met him, actually, I had a winner in Roscommon. He said, you never told me about that. And I said, oh, sorry, John. <laughs> Great days. Yes. Uh, they were, though. We're like, I, you know, so with the passage of time, what your team did for Kildare football, like it's been so long since there was that level of excitement or belief around the county, before and since. Like, with the passage of time, it matters less and less that you didn't win the final, I think. You know, you're still a... a no, it doesn't, not, it doesn't have you played it. Do you know what I mean? It's the biggest regret I have in life. Um, and, you know, it was no fault of anyone's. I just, I think on the day, I remember the second half, I think Galway, Galway lo- knew a lot more about us than we did about them. They had their homework done, uh, more so than we did. They came and rehearsed. They stayed in, 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 in Kildare two weeks before the match, drove around Kildare in the bus did a full rehearsal, they were just 110% and we were just that little bit, you know, unprepared. And I'll say that now and people will probably slate me for it. But Too cocky? Uh, I wouldn't say cocky, I'd say just they knew everything about our players. We made a few switches that were silly uh, for one injury. We moved, we moved guys around that shouldn't have been playing in those positions. Did David not, Dalton not play? Is that what happened? Yeah. So and David, then, David then, was injured and, and, and... And then Sass moved out centre, or wing, wing back. To uh, Mark Jaff Allen? Or no, to mark um, uh, the young player of the year, Donlan. Donlan. Oh, yes. And like Ken, the put Ken Dyle in corner. Yeah. Yeah. And the put Ken Ken Dyle in corner. But Ken Dyle would have been. Who was crying out for Ken Dyle? Because Ken Dyle was a great runner, you know. Yeah. 
played third midfield for his club all, all his life would have been ideal and Sass is an out and out corner back you know? I'll, I'll never forget I was, I was covering the game it was my first season as a reporter for FM 104 and I just remember before the game a Kildare supporter turned around to another Kildare supporter going isn't it great that Sass gets to start now he'll get his medal and I was like mm. oh Jesus yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, did Jesus, you believe in the hype in the county because it must have been overwhelming as well it was but I mean like you, you have to Get away from that. You can't believe it because, I mean, there's no, there's no match ever won, you know, at the start of the game. It's always one at the end. Mm. I mean, you can't even a one to five shot in racing. Oh, you know, yeah. it can, can the jockey can conduct coming out of stalls or something can happen. Do you know what I mean? So you were saying we were three to one on, but I mean, we never believed the hype because, you know, we, we were totally driven. I mean, we, I thought we were a very unified team that year, you know, and it was to keep the hype away from us, Mikko was trying to do with clone, close training sessions and all this, you know, but it, it was hard to get away from it now. Mm. But I mean, I, I mean, I went to work that morning, I was working for Charles O'Brien, assistant trainer, I went to work that morning just to get, keep, keep the normal thing, keep the routine to itself, you mm. know, and, and do everything uh, the way we did. We all sat in the same place on the bus, we all sit in the same place in the dressing room, you know, and you, be, before you know it, you're trying to repeat your winning formula, which you won the previous game. Do you know? You have to spare the way football has gone from the odd time I talk to you about it. Oh, it's, it's horrible to watch. I mean, when you see, you know, I, I just love watching a good game of football and when you're looking at really in the years and you look at some of the old games, I mean, they're actually kicking the ball 40, 50 yards and it's great football and, and, and like, you go and look at a minor game, it's great football in any county mm. because they're not playing this you know, let's try and stop the team from winning. Why don't you go out and beat them by outscoring them? Mm. You know, but that's, I suppose, naive football now, you know. How old were you when you made the team? Uh, 25. Okay, because you were late. Is it fair to say you were a late bloomer in terms of... No, well, I, I, I kind of, um, uh, when I was 18, I did the Irish National Stud course. And then I went to, straight from there to Australia. Okay. To work at horses, and then I came back, and then I went to America for two years, and then I came back, and then I went nice. to Japan for a year. Right. So I wasn't really fully back till I was 24. Okay. Yeah. And then straight in the team. Uh, well, a sub for I I boiled some yards now from sitting on the on the on the on the substitutes bench for a long time. And I have a great story there. There was uh, we were on Mikko's first term, and I was being called on for about two minutes to go on leash for beating us in a in a league game. And Mikko Mikko turned around, come on, come on, come on. And uh, Dave Malone grabbed my leg. He says, "Stay there." He says, and "He says why? If you get up, he says, and you go on, the tracksuit you're wearing, you won't get to keep it." You know, that's how things were then. <laughs> you know, you're playing for a tracksuit, you know. You know, it was a totally different era oh, compared to that. Yeah. As in, you'd have to take it off, the sub coming off would get to keep it, and then you would and not, he'd disappear, yeah, you'd yeah. going, here, that's <laughs> yeah. my tracksuit. Yeah. Yeah, what, what exactly. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. madness. Yeah, that's madness. Yeah. Things changed, things changed uh, l- largely on the back of the racing community. Isn't that right? Um, the Kildare Supporters Club was largely set up by... Michael Osborne. Yeah. Michael for, Osborne, was, uh, Michael Osborne actually was the reason Sheikh Mohammed has nine stud farms in Ireland. He started, uh, he got Sheikh Mohammed to invest in Kilangan stud first, and then he was, he was ten subsequent studs in Ireland, so he's probably employing two 2,000 people here because of Michael Osborne. He was also the manager of the Irish National Stud at the time, and he founded the Kildare Supporters Club, and he was the man who got, got Mick O'Dwyer to come to Kildare. I mean, of all of those achievements, obviously Mick is the greatest. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> we can all agree on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he was a great man, great, uh, a great politician in racing, you know what I mean? I, so, I didn't know that you'd had that kind of um, training, and it was obviously fated that you were going to go into racing. It was like from a, an early age, you know, you don't, en- you don't enroll in the National Stud Course at 18 unless you've been dreaming about it from... Oh uh, no! I, I, look at my father was a was a, a racehorse trainer. My grandfather, mother's side, my mother is uh, Patah's sister, so he was a jockey. And uh, I always thought I was going to be a jockey till I was about fourteen. Till next minute, I just shot up because my brother uh, Tom is only nine stone. My brother Peter be only ten and a half stone to be to be only five foot six, five foot seven. Right. Okay. You no. Know, so I don't know whether the postman was around or what, but uh, <laughs> you know. But like, I mean, uh, look at. I, I got my height. My sisters, two of my sisters are very tall. So, right. like, I, I loved, I always loved riding out in that. And, um, you know, I, I was raging. I couldn't be a jockey. I rode a few amateur races. And I remember I didn't eat from Thursday to a Sunday to ride in an amateur race as a minor. I played a county minor game that morning, got thrown around like a rag doll. And uh, then I said, no, I started eating my burgers. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So you were obviously good at football the whole way along as well. But uh, Yeah, love, look, I was an athlete. I, I did a lot of running under 10 I have an All Ireland, under 10 All Ireland community games. Right. 200 metres, yeah. So. Okay. No, I loved running. I found running very easy. 
it was that round thing got in the way a bit. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. I think yeah. you're, you've been a bit too humble there. Um, that's the joy of being a Gaelic footballer is that you can do it. It's not a professional thing. You didn't have to pick between racing and playing Gaelic football. You can yeah. actually do both happily. Yeah, because the, uh, you know all the, all the games are on the Sunday. You train on the evening, so it never interfere to work. Yeah. You know, I'd usually if I was drafted on to work on, on, on a Sunday evening, I'd just give someone a few quid to work for me on the Sunday evening and, you know, got away for all the games, yeah? Right. Yeah. Uh, when did you get good at training? Pardon? When did you get good at training? Uh, when did I start training? No, when did you get good at it? No, oh, not, not yet. <laughs> still working on it, still working on it, yeah. No, no, look, I, I f- kind of fell into it. I was running the stud farm and uh, the people who were on the stud farm asked me to train a few horses privately and that's what I did and... Then, when, uh, when was that? That's kind of uh, that's eight years ago. Okay, right. Yeah, and then um, we had a parting of ways, so I moved on to the Curra and rented a little yard in the Curra and uh, started off. And I invested twenty grand in myself. Okay. And I said that's what uh, I said to a man and my wife, and we said, "Look, we'll, we'll go for it." Yeah, we'll go for it, twenty grand. And if it doesn't work, we won't put any more money into it because I see a lot, a lot of trainers get themselves in the red because they just they don't. They can't look after their books, to be yeah. honest. Do you know what I mean? You have to run it as a business. How, how lucky are you to be at the Curra? Um, I think if you can't train the Curra, you can't train anywhere. Mm. I mean, it, it, we have every facility. We have about eight to 10,000 acres of, of grassland. We have uh, five different wood chip gallops. We have a sand gallop that uh, everyone comes and uses. Willie Mullins comes and uses. Gordon Elliott comes and uses. Jessica Harrington comes and uses. They, they use all our facilities in the Curra. And still they all train off it. Um, lots of people said they wouldn't train on the Curra. But, I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful facility. And uh, it's actually, at the moment, there's a few yards getting run down. And you'd love to see more investment onto the Curra, you know? It's probably that, I suppose, some, some people are afraid to go into the game as well as trainers now, young trainers, to take over their molar yards because it's tough. It is tough, but, I mean, it's, like it's, it's, you know, you can't buy a yard. To build a gallop would cost you four. It costs about 200000 or about 20000 a furlong. You know what I mean? So you put in a firm gallop, you know, you're fair in debt before you even have a runner. And gallops take about four to six months to bed in. You know, you'll get a lot of injuries if you go working them because just the, the, they're loose and they have to be, you know, watered properly and the whole lot. And like our gallops in the car are fantastic. Like any guy can, can literally, well, you have to do your trainer's course, which mm. is a two week course, and you have to have an assistant trainer course before that. So not any guy can start, but relatively speaking, it's a lot easier to start on the car when you're just renting a yard. And, you know, your, your initial outlay isn't as, isn't as much as a private charge. Mm. It's kind of a start of business then, eight years ago, when you're, like, your seed capital is your 20 grand, and you're deciding that, okay, this is, we're going to stop doing everything we've been doing up to now, and we're going to go. That's a big moment in anybody's life. Well, I had 12 horses. I started with 12 horses. Eight were my own. Right. So, and I bought a few yearlings, and I actually started a racing uh, club, and I got lads to invest, and it was an all-in share. Um, it was, I think it was four and a half thousand for a share and there was no other costs after that. And two of the horses in that uh, 116 races and 112 race we sold to Hong Kong. So those guys were in, in, in with me for four years and never paid another penny after that nice. on, on those horses. And then I sold the other horses and I had 17 winners my first year. Wow. And um, I think I had six or seven, uh, 47 to 65 rated winners that year because that's what the horses you have. Like, I mean... You what does that to, mean? Just explain that. Um, it's, it's a, a, it's a grade lower grade handicap. Okay, it's yeah. the lowest grade handicap in Ireland on the flat. Not easily won though. No, they're, they're have the most you, competitive you know. because yeah. everybody you know, has those horses. Everybody has those horses. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you, you have to line them up and, and place them properly and try and win your races and you know let the owners have the few quid on if you if you can. You know. So bring us back then, right? You've you've made the decision and it's a big risk. You've kind of you're going to dedicate your life to this for the next while. You don't know how it's going to go, but the first time you you have a winner, what's that like? Oh, it's, you're ecstatic. Uh, the first winner was a filly called Toasted Special, uh, my very first filly to training, and uh, Willie Supple rode her in Cork. And Jimmy Barry Murphy met me before the race, and he says, how do you run here? And I says, I tell you, she's 16 to 1, but I think she'll run well. And she won at 16 to 1. That was my first winner. And then my first winner for my wife was a, a, um, a, a point-to-point winner called Ionosphere. And... Uh, after that, then, you just, you know, you, you, you try and get as many as you can. You know, my first winner yesterday was my first winner for Belinda Strudwick from Ballygallan Stud. Uh, that was my first winner for them yesterday, and they, they've sent four horses to me to start of the year. So, right. you know, it's a new owner, and you want to get, you know, you want to get winners for them as well. You, like every owner, it's vital to try and, every horse has to pay for itself. If it's no good, out of the place. 
how do you like so if, if you were a football manager I'd ask you now what's your style of play how do you want your style to do? like what's your philosophy how do you set your team up uh, um, I have to be I, I don't have the numbers the big trainers have I'd have uh, in full training I'd have probably 50 horses Right. so I have to line them up that they're all ready to play for me and if they can't me- make the A team and they're only going to make the B team we have to run them in races so as to get the best out of them so it's a, it's it's as much you, you get you've got to train the horses to be absolutely ready for when the opportunity arises, but then you've got to pick the right opportunities as well. Exactly. So the strategy isn't just to get them fit and well. The strategy is finding the right opportunity for them. The, 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 well, the first strategy is I, I call myself a conditioner. I condition horses hard enough that when they run, the race doesn't take much out of them. Do you know what I mean? Nico style. Yes. It'd be like you asking you to run a marathon tomorrow. Not going to happen. Obviously, not going to happen. So, you know, if, you, if I get you fit enough to run a marathon, you should come out at marathon and be able to run one in another month, six weeks. Yeah. But in a horse, like, um, you know, you, you want to be, them to be able to run and the race doesn't take much out of them. So they go home, they eat their dinner, they think it's not a bad, you know, they didn't get a fright. Yeah. You know, they finished well. You know, they didn't go over, over their, their barrier. Say some horses... Their barrier might be five, six furlongs, or might be seven furlongs, or a staying horse might be mile and two, mile and a half. But if you go further than the horse, if you ask, a horse will die for you. And there's no, like horses do, you know, unfortunately die, their heart erupts from races, but a horse will die for you. And if you ask him to do too much when he's not able to, this, you're asking the wrong question, you know? Uh, so we've obviously been talking about this a good bit on the show. Like, certain horses obviously have very specific breeding, you have a fair idea they're going to be a stamina horse or they're going to be a speed horse uh, are there still horses that you find though that you kind of they hit two two and a half three that you're like actually this horse this, despite the breeding this horse is performing not the same way that you would expect usually they surprise you negatively <laughs> you know oftentimes you can go okay there's more stamina here and why is there more stamina here and you can go into the second dam and you'll see there's a lot of stamina there. Okay. You know, usually the slow ones are slower. You'll find a reason somewhere first. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, um, like, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stallions will, will upgrade most mares, but then there's a lot of stallions will degrade most mares as well. So, okay. like, Galileo, for example, is probably the best stallion in the world because mentally, those horses, they don't bother. Racing doesn't bother them. You know what I mean? Like, oh, like it'd be like a soccer player going out to a match. Some soccer players would be in, in the dressing room and they'd be wired and they'd go out and they get two yellow cards and sent off just because they're, you know, they're, they're, their heads are fried or just so excited about getting out. Whereas if he was a horse, you might put a hood in him yeah. and just get him to chill out a little bit. We were talking to Donica about that last week. Just the Galileo horses, obviously they're good, but they're just, they're very battle hard and they want to race like, and they're, they're straightforward. That's the main thing. If you have a stallion who's getting a lot of horses that are just, that are quirky or that basically have mental issues, um, it, it's going to be a massive downer on them. And Galileo, it's just incredible consistency of, of running ability. He is now, and I, 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 I don't have many, but I hear them saying it, but like, I have a few invincible spirits, mm. and he injects a lot of speed into them. You know, and, he, and they're a different type of horse. Physically, in, uh, invincible spirits, their front legs will be closer to their hind legs because they have more power. They'll be like a turbo car as against a truck. Do you know what I mean? They, they, and they inject a lot of power into horses. And that's where you're, you're trying to combine your mare. When you're going looking to buy a horse, you're trying to... Well, personally, I try and buy a fast horse because I'm trying to keep away from the regally bred ones of Aidan O'Brien and such. You know? That's interesting, yeah, because you'd have tried to avoid Galileo then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, it's no point taking on him because I don't... Explain that, sorry. So you, you're looking for... Aiden, Aiden Galileo is so, so, so all in, 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 in empowering, I suppose, from his perspective. Galileo horses generally will run over sort of 10 furlong medium trip. A lot of them stay further. The odd one would be very good at six furlongs. But by and large, they're middle distance horses. So Willie would go for a fast horse. Aiden O'Brien would, wouldn't have many very good sprinters okay. in general. Um, in, at least compared to the... Like, you, you see the maidens and you're like... You go, you're, you're previewing a maiden and he's like four Galileos in the race and then you go to the dam side and they're incredibly well bred again and one of them is 33 to 1 and you're just like what one trainer would do to have the outside mm. of the four you know and it's just every every race it's like they'll keep going back to Galileo as well with the same dam so Willie would obviously try to you know just if you can get a, a fast horse at least you're probably less likely you'd be dealing with an Aidan O'Brien trained horse that isn't actually by Galileo and in actual fact they're trying now to they're, you know they're, they're bought Scott Daddy yeah. they're really heavily invested in Scott, Scott Daddy, uh, the Coomore people, be tried to inject speed 
into these mares that are going to have so many Galileo So they progeny. can compete on the sprinters as well. Yeah, well, like, I mean... The, the, so many Galileo-bred mares, they can't go to Galileo, yeah. they need another stallion. Yeah. You know, and... Um, to freshen their blood, you see. Yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. Scat Daddy's had no name ever who's had, we'll say, ten sovereigns, so they look, they look like they're in a good place in the, at the moment. And he's a totally outcross, yeah. which means he won't be... Like, like a farmer has the bull, he has to change the bull every few years or, ex, or, or the bull is starting to mate with the, with the yeah, calves, right. which yeah. are his daughters. So yeah. he has to get rid of them. And, and the same thing with the horses, you know. So uh, your background was in stud farming? Uh, um, my, my father was a trainer, but I, mean, I, knew, I knew I wasn't going to be a jockey, so he also told me not to go, to go training, so I went into the, stu into the, st uh, the stud end, yeah. Which, yeah. Uh, so we were talking about this last week, if, if you're a vet, it helps to be a trainer, because obviously you kind of understand the physiology of the horse a little bit different. It must help as well, if you've got a stud background, you've obviously been immersed in bloodlines and the minding and uh, care of horses. Well, uh, yeah, and I, 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 I've dealt with the care from a, a, basically a pregnancy being that size, being, you know, being, being conceived, sending a mare off to being conceived to, to fall in mares of, you know, one year we fall 120 mares in, in, on our farm uh, and then I just, you know, raised all them and you can see the difference in, in you know, I like to buy, when I'm buying a horse, I, I'll buy off certain stud farms because I know they have really good grass. I mean, if, when you're looking at a horse, he's eating uh, particles of grass all day long and that's his, his nutrients and that's what builds them up and makes them strong it's not the feed that we give them in one scoop yeah you know you, you're only supplementing how do you know that then or how do you know what well I know what's farms not to buy off yeah you know what I mean there's a lot of like a, is it the a, land or what yeah the land just what part of the country it is or Kildare be, would be great yeah. great land you know yeah. it's, it's because it's limestone yeah and it's an Elton, Elton series um, land and you'll see it on, on the thing and then you'll, you'll actually, you, you'll see it on, on a map of Kildare and then you'll look at the, and you'll see all the stud farms are based on like up around Minute, Mydler mm. and all those, there's a lot of stud farms up around there, it's wonderful land, you know, um, before Sheikh Mohammed would buy a farm, they'd go and look and see the, the limestone down around Tipperary, another vast amount of limestone down there, so it's just, it's just, and you'll see where they, where they raise good cattle and good trees, there's always good land, like you never see a good oak in a bog, you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's mad. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. I didn't know any of this stuff. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like, I mean, it's like you. When did you realise that, though? Like, when did you realise that, like, as a, when you're working on a stud farm in your early 20s, you're like, hang on a second, I see all these horses are really healthy. I see the horses over there not quite as good as these horses. I'm putting it down to the following characteristics. Overproduction. Um, horses uh, being overproduced in a, in a paddock, you know, too much, too many horses in one paddock and there's basically no grass room. You can see that, you, you know, when you look at the big farms, they have nearly one horse to an acre. Right. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what they are. Or one horse to ten acres, sorry. That's what they're looking for in their, in their, in their routine. For example, the dairymen will, will have 21 paddocks for grazing the cows. So every 21 days they move the, the cows around so the grass is coming back behind them. But the horses, you don't do that because if you actually move horses around, they get used to... If you let a horse loose in the field, he'd gallop around the field and go, go to the four extremities of the field to know his surrounds and then he's happy, and then he'll relax in that field. But if you move him every day, he's going to gallop every bloody day, and he's not going to put on condition, and he's more chance of hurting himself. Like, you yeah. want a horse to be a horse. And like, a horse in nature would roam 20 miles a day, and he might get a, grab a bit of gorse off a bit of furze bush here, go off and eat some uh, timothy grass five miles away, and he'll go and source all these. But when you put them into one paddock, you're refining their... What they, where they can go. So you've know, got to make sure they're getting all these supplements daily and that's why you're feeding them basically feed as well. Do you know what I mean? You obviously made the right choice. It feels like you, you definitely made the right choice in becoming a trainer. Oh yeah, I love it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, I love now, for example, our first uh, yearling just came into the yard the other day um, because the season is nearly over. I have, I've them all been farmed out and been broken at the minute. So that's very exciting. That must it. be special just when you see that from the just the blank canvas that it is and just that it's a baby as well. Well, and, and I bought, like, uh, I bought in Tattersall's uh, in, 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 um, in across from Ferry House, I bought in Goffs and I bought in Newmarket. And, I, and last week I was just having a look at all the, they're all riding now. They're, they're with me three, four weeks and now they're all riding and it's, they're totally different horses that you see at the sales and it's what way they react.
react to the saddle and you know the different uh, um, kind of temperament come out on, on, on them. It's that. a challenge as well to say if you're, you're, you're grade one, your group one winner is Faisalana who's by Aussie rules so that's what you're at. Your Aussie rules would have very few group one winners mm. but that's your you have to challenge yourself to make the best like the manager who doesn't have a, bit, a massive checkbook and that's yeah. what makes it more exciting in a way because I guess it's like TG Cahar produce great programs a lot of the time they produce great programs because they have to be very specific because they don't have the money. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, look at you, 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 you know, and, and you're buying horses with a, spe a specific target. So, like, uh, when I started out, I'd buy horses with little, uh, little flaws in them. With flaws. With flaws. Because mm. you could afford might, them. Yeah, and they might have a good pedigree. Mm. But those flaws then would actually um, uh, stop you getting the proper money if you do win a race mm. because the flaws are still there. So then I said, no, let's, let's buy the one you know, the, the one that we can afford, that if he does win a race, we'll get the lotto. Slightly less flashy pedigree then? Or? Slightly less yeah. flashy pedigree, or a new pedigree. Yeah, that you, you know. take a chance on. Yeah, take a chance on. Like mm. a one filly there bought this year, uh, last year was an Olympic glory filly, mm. um, who's a new stallion. He, he's a very fast horse, a uh, five furlong horse, but his first progeny were only racing in 2018. Right. And I bought it out of a mare who was an unraced mare, but she was well related. So it was very risky. And uh, she finished second to Fairyland in Nace, and she finished second um, uh, in, in the listed race in Tipperary, and she won in the stole, and I sold it to America for a lot of money. Mm. Because when the, when the agent came to buy her, she was a perfect model. Yeah. Only she was a risky, i taken the risk buying her. But, but you, you had to take the risk, because that's what you can well, afford. Well, that's all I could afford, yeah. 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 But and you was had a bunch success of with Fast Company, in, was it his first year? Yeah, year? yeah, yeah. I had and, and, um, two of Philly and uh, uh, Devonshire. Yeah, was and Downforce. It? And yeah. Downforce. Yeah. And Downforce, actually, he's running Saturday week in, in, um, in Doncaster in a listed race, and I hope to God it rains, because the way the weather's been now, it's been too firm for him. And he's fit, he's actually, you talk about confirmation, he's actually feet like flippers. Right. He's the most unusual feet. They're actually, I'd say, an inch probably wider than most horses' feet. And I just don't think he physically goes down into the ground on soft ground as other horses does. You know, I think he's had to skip along the ground when other horses... It, it's just something like, this is a slightly tangent, but an awful lot of trainers this year have been completely screwed by the weather, like, so screwed, like, and owners who've basically had no opportunity to run a horse yet, they're, they're paying the money week in, week out, and you were probably one of those trainers that was maybe more disadvantaged but, um, than others were because of just... I saw a horse run the other day that's run on heavy ground five times, I think, this, this season. And I couldn't figure out how in the name of God they'd manage that inside York, as I said. I, I barely remember being heavy for one week. Yeah. Yeah, no, look, it's been a wonderful summer, a wonderful year. Um, what can we do about it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? The season's over now and we're looking at good ground and nace and, and going to be the what, 4th or 5th of November. Yeah. I mean, usually you'd have meetings called off this time of the year, but there's, yeah. there's none of that. Um, uh, like last week we were racing in Turles because there's been two abandoned National Hunt meetings and it's great to see flat racing in Turles. Mm. We're, we've lost, you know, we we're losing too many tracks to National Hunt because mm. people are saying flat, people aren't going to see flat racing. I was at a few National Hunt me meetings and there's no one there either, you know? Yeah. I mean, we really have to, and, and I think... HRI have to step up to the plate and do a lot more advertising with, with about horse racing. I mean, we're way down the list on the RT News, say, uh, on, on, a, a, on an average day uh, and on the TV. You know, Is that you just where we're at, though, unfortunately? Yeah, but why, why are we at? We, we, we have enough money invested mm. in, in horse racing that we can do a bit of advertising. We're still a peripheral sport. I know, I know, but we're not money-wise mm. in, in, in Ireland. Mm. We're, like, I mean, what income... Soccer doesn't bring in the income the horse racing does. Not, not even close. No, yeah. you know, Gaelic, Gaelic sports probably does, but that's only, you know, because everyone, every single parish plays it, you know? Yeah. And, like, a horse, people have a great affinity with horses in Ireland. Like, everyone, I'd say everyone has some bit of horsemanship in them. I think, I think it's the type of thing that, um, it, the, the industry has got much better in recent years at telling their stories and revealing the characters and opening up the language around... Because it, it, it's a little bit tricky to get your head around some of the things that are happening if well, you're, even if you're this, casual like, enough. Yeah, even this, you were trying to... We're, we're not trying to pro be, promote propaganda for racing. We're trying to explain stuff that people don't realise about, like what Willie's saying there. Like, you know, and every week we're just trying to produce people who have a different story to tell um, that may not actually have to do with the horse running in a race because there's an awful lot more to it than that. And that's what always fascinates me is the character of the horse because they've 
unbelievably different characteristics themselves and if once you, you actually are around them it's really compelling like and I think that's what we have to sell like how beautiful the animals are mentally and physically and how different they are you know because yeah. they're always they're, everyone's different to the next one like yeah I think the stories are also amazing like I, you know the stuff today about the quality of the land being important in terms of the quality of the horse that they yeah. output it makes perfect sense when you when you explain it it's like oh yeah okay mm. it's completely mm. obvious but like uh, having somebody who's actually lived it and telling that story uh, and like you're talking about the Cora like I mean I, I have I have probably uh, 14 lads working for me do you know what I mean if I didn't start I wouldn't be implying 14 uh, there. and even more in, in rural Ireland oh, Carlow and places yeah. like it's, and the yard is huge yeah like, yeah. like look at Willie Mullins' yard and you know what's yeah. that's given what's Joseph O'Brien's yard is given in the, in the hill in in Piltown, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, like there's over a hundred people down there. You know what I mean? All in our industry, and like I mean, you know, there's a there's a terrible lot of negative publicity, I suppose, in our race because people think it's an elitist sport because they see, you know, the big uh, the guys flying in the helicopters. But like the Irish National Stud, for example, they're running starting up a new racing club. Yeah, it's three hundred ninety nine quid to get into it for the year. For the year, yeah. there's six horses in it. I have one of the horses, Little Promise. She won a five four enlisted race. I'd hope to get her to Royal Ascot next year. Um, for 400 quid you can get involved in that racing club and with the national nine, stories, well, like, nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and maybe maybe have a day out in Ascot next year yeah and any, and there's six horses involved uh, Michael O'Callan has one uh, as well she's won she won the same week in Navin um, you know and there's uh, Turned and Roses I think gone into it National Hunt Horse that they bought to put into it that'll be retired to National Stud and you know it's, it's a great initiative you know yeah. And the National Stud, in fairness to visit it, is, is, is well worth it. And uh, it might be elitist, but this year we'd, you know, Jessica Harrington win the Classic. We had um, Ken Bond. Condo win the Classic. And we had Patrick Prendergast win in mm. a Group 1 um, on Champions Weekend. Um, and I think that's great. I think that really people warm to them stories yeah. as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, even when, when Skitter Scatter won the Mygler, I was talking to a Georgian guy who'd come all the way over from Georgia via John Gosnell's to work. And he looks after her every day. And... It was like as if he'd won the lotto, and that was just a horse that he looks after at home when uh, Group One. He was overcome with emotion, and they're the stories you know you, you like to tell. Name. Yeah, from, uh, from Georgia. He yeah. worked with me for a while, a great yeah. lad, and he yeah. makes he makes tack, and he 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 just totally into horses, loves horses. Yeah, Do you know what I, mean? I just couldn't believe how he got from Georgia to uh, yeah. Kildare, you know. Um, but they're the, they're the stories that I like to hear anyway. Yeah, no, it's class. What's so? You're obviously. Not just a trainer, you, you obviously have horses and you're involved in that aspect of it as well. Could you just be a trainer, do you think? Or like, if, would that have been sustainable for you? Did you need the other parts of the business to make it work? Oh, you do, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's very hard to make it as a trainer unless you're buying and selling horses at my level. It seems impossible, really. You have to buy and sell and, and you know, turn horses over, to be, be, be honest. And that's why our trainers stay static. Because they're selling their better horses, and someone else can afford them and, and improve them. And you've probably sold probably a potential group horse out of your, your, out of your yard, but you have to take, you, know, you have to take the dollars. Yeah, and it's it's so like football, like Wimbledon back in the day. They get a good player, they sell it, like, and that's just you just that's just to keep going. Mm. And it, it it must be bittersweet because it's like I'm after landing on one here, but unfortunately, no, you're yeah. better off having it than not having it. Yeah, but. yeah, no, no, no. Look at it. I mean. You, you, you know, you want to see it go on because then people say, well, he raised it and he didn't kill it. Do you know what I mean? He, 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 you know, someone else is able to improve yeah. it so he didn't get to the bottom of it out yeah. as a two-year-old. So they'd come back to you and you'd be more of a chance of selling more horses. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing worse than all your horses getting going out of the yard and nothing, nothing wins because then they'll say, oh... We, we, you slog them like... Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. And it doesn't sound like you're going um, training any national hunt horses soon. I, uh, I have a, I have, I'll have two or three this year. Okay, two right. or three. Just Juvenile's are... Isles are. One, they're all kind of slow flat horses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hope you're not trying to sell them, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, no. They'll they'll work. They'll do a job now. They're yeah. actually national hunt or three year old hurdlers. There's one three year old hurdlers, and the, the other two are three year olds that'll run four year old bumpers next year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because you mentioned um, that horse that won the point to point. That I honestly. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. Yeah. Probably won a maiden hurdle or something like that. He, and Barry Cashew, so I. Yeah, know, and he yeah. won. He won a forty-seven sixty-five at yeah. a critical time too. <laughs> yeah, and he, he won a maiden hurdle for Barry, and then uh, he he won a, a pint of point and was second in those days. Is it harder to jump straight? Like, it? look, it, I, I'd say, it, um, you you can do a lot better on the flat and scattered around. I mm. think the national hunt has gone very. You know, there's two or three trainers, and, and I, like, it, like certainly the smaller trainers. If you have a good horse, it's bought off you straight away, so they can never keep competing because 
there's so much money coming in for their horses, so they have to sell them. That's the that's the ironic shift in Irish racing that flat racing has somewhat become more egalitarian. I think it's because we've done dock as well, and there's more there is more of an opportunity, and uh, it's really hard for jumps trainers to compete. And you see jumps trainers actually gradually shifting towards training flat horses now, even with the Mullins name. Yeah. You know, and it's mm. wow. Yeah. No. No. Like I mean, there's a lot of good good flat trainers. I think I think like. If you win a race here in Ireland as a, as a flat trainer, you I can the world is your oyster with that horse because we, our standard of racing here it's is so, good. so high. I mean, like we, you you go now the Breeders' Cup the weekend and look at the many races Aidan O'Brien would compete and you know at the top 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 level top yeah. tier. So he's the top trainer in the world. He broke the world record last year. In the Melbourne you know, Cup, like you know Willie yeah. Willie and Joseph O'Brien having the one two in it, like it's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know it's it's only and a handicap, the, but it's Aussie racing, and uh, yeah. no, the, the st- that's the one thing I'll always say about Irish racing. We're world leaders in this, and we're world leaders in bugger all. Mm. And we're wor- and our jockeys, like I mean, our, we we produce wonderful jockeys that you know most of the English jockeys are all Irish. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of Irish lads down in Australia jockeys, a lot of lads in, in America as well. Yeah. You know, like we we do produce great horsemen in Ireland. You know, yeah. so I think it's I think it's in our blood. To be, to be certain, you know. Yeah, no, this has been great. We've got to talk about some other stuff, though. Um, Johnny's going to try and win us some money this week. Uh, with thanks to the tote.com, dot, the, <clears throat> I'll start that one again. With thanks to the tote.com, we have two 100 euro charity bets. One's going to be for the Breeders' Cup um, on either the Friday or Saturday night, and uh, the other is our usual 100 euro bets. Any winnings from our tote bets will go directly to the Irish injured jockeys. Eight and Bob did some business for us last week. Like one, what more do you want? Oh, there you go. What, what odds? Uh, I think it was around even money. It actually ran not it ran the last few hours and was beaten. So you should be thankful for small mercy. There you go. Okay, so we're up to nine hundred and sixty-five euros now for the Inter Jockeys Fund. Um, bet one is newspaper of record. Yeah, um, I got to give mention to Gary Carroll as well, who who actually ran the marathon for the Inter Jockeys and then had like five or six rides in Galway the following day. And did a pound over with. And did a pound over with. <laughs> did a pound over with. Worked that one out. <laughs> I asked him, I asked him, how did you do a pound over with? And he had to run in, and, and, he, and he did it in three, uh, was it? 340, four, I think. 340, so I, I think fast. he stopped and had a sl- yeah. away. <laughs> I actually, I, well, I can't make sense of that either. Was, uh, he said he was grand on the horse, but just when he got off the horse walking out, was afraid, and, oh, God. <laughs> he said, next year I'm going to probably take the day off. I run it. And Mick Mulvaney gave him a stick for putting the pound over it. Now, Mick Mulvaney can't give him any sticks for putting the pound over it. If anyone knows Mick Mulvaney. Uh, in any event, newspaper of record in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. I don't know if you know Chad Brown. Yeah, um, he's, he's, he's the leading trainer in America, and, and he's certainly a, a, a t- top class lawn trainer to call him over there. The lawn, lawn trainer. A lawn trainer which is a grass trainer. Yeah. He, for some reason he bought that Philly minted off me. Um, you know, oh you've actually okay yeah. Yes, yes. yeah so he, he no, he's geez, he's he's just young as well. He's, he's not old. Very, like. Yeah no no he's, he's, I think he's only 40. He's yeah. So he's uh, won this three of the last four years and um, he the, this this I don't think she'll she's by loop to Vegas so I don't think she'll mind the bit of rain um, which obviously is on the way and the second bet um, is running in Ireland Sancta Simone at Down Royal on the Friday um, I hope that's not too early for our listeners um, if it is we can it can obviously give something on the Saturday it's just not 100% sure of the declarations at the moment yeah because of the jigging sound of so many run- happened a couple of hours ago Johnny yeah well so, yeah. In, in that event I'm sure it has been beaten but um, w- jigging sound of a load of runners in the big race on Saturday but at the moment it's just it's kind of hard to know um, what they'll actually run but that certainly newspaper record will run. I tell you what we'll do. We'll stick with newspaper record. Yeah, seven cool. to four favorite at the moment, but obviously uh, you'll get the prices on the tote.com. Keep an eye on the tote.com or the tote social media to see what the payout's going to be on our selections, and we'll we'll tweet another one, another if you. Willie want. has runners in Dundalk on the Friday night as well. One of whom six thirty. Yeah, that's, that's before your thing yeah. as well. Isn't no, it? no, we're so in the afternoon. This will this will teach yeah. people to get to us. Yeah, uh, six thirty. Peshkova. She just won on Wednesday, but I think she's headed a handicapper. Okay. And she's running in a, in a 4765. I think she's she's now rated 69. So What's very Jim Bulger esque of you, run her straight away again. Yeah, I think just before you know, it's the end of the year. Yeah, you know? yeah. I can I can apologise to her all winter. What's yeah. 4765? Uh, just a rating uh, rating ban. Okay, yeah. now she's, she's anomalously not actually in that bracket, but she gets in because she when at entry stage she she was eligible for the race, but now she's gone above it, but. That happened after she was entering the race. So it's fair enough, you get yeah. to stay in. Yeah. And you have another runner as well, haven't you? I have another runner, um, um, Black Martini, but I don't think she'll beat Aidan O'Brien's captain of the fleet. Yeah, yeah. I think he'd be very hard to beat. But she's a nice, sharp little filly, and uh, she's drawn nicely. Fan of the Black Martinis? 
Never had one. Yeah, black Russian. Black indeed. Russian. Yeah. A few black Russians, all right. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, Espresso martini, be that's well worth a go now. Oh, I, know, yeah. I know you're having a few later. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Get get them. Uh, get them on the uh, on the on the on the free roll. Tell me uh, other races that we should be talking about this weekend at the Breeders' Cup in particular. Yeah. So obviously the the we've the classic uh, in which Aidan is going back tr to try to win a dart race with Mendelssohn. Um, I'm not sure the, the ground is going to suit because he, he ran on the slop in the Kentucky Derby and he really looked like he was all at sea. Now, that race was nuts. He got barged out of the stalls and he's it's probably his most ambitious project this season is to run the Classic with him. I think it'd be asking a lot. He hasn't had much luck in the race, obviously, with it being on dirt. Um, and Enable is obviously running in the... Classic is, is, is the Americans. It's, it's on... It's on it's in America, on their dirt surface, and it's not never a European has never won it. But we were very unlucky with this way. Um, the this the Toast New York is it or Toast New yeah, York? That's right. Was very very unlucky uh, two or three years ago. I think he should have won it. Yeah, he, like, he was touched off. And yeah, then, yeah, he was that's very right. very unlucky. Jamie Osborne. Jamie it's, Osborne. It's, you need a horse more or less who's American bred, which he is by Scat Daddy. Um, but, you know, the, I was in America, actually, for the Kentucky Derby, and even that race, everyone is watching it, and this will be similar, but it just, a lot has to go right. Mm -hmm. um, but, obviously, the the, the, dirt, the turf horses would have reasonable chances. Um, he, he has about a team of 14 over there, and mm. it's it's well worth watching. I remember when it's I... It's early, actually. It's not too bad this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in Churchill. It's not too bad. Are you, you Have you had a runner... I, I ran Fisalana in, yeah. in Santa Anita, and I thought it was the Carlsberg of racing. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was absolutely... Fantastic place. Yeah. Why? Just because the way the the facilities in in Santa Anita were unbelievable. Where is Santa Anita? Uh, California. Okay. And um, right, right, um, where's the city you fly into? Um, I'm not sure actually. Yeah. Um, oh, Japers. Uh, <laughs> but like you just you wake up in the morning and you, the the mountains are set in the background. Yeah, it's oh, amazing. Oh, amazing. Look at yeah. Um, you know, and then we we have. Sam Crow return at Down Royal, obviously, on Friday, which will obviously be, be earlier on. But uh, then we have Down Royal's big meeting on the Saturday. Um, as I say, the, the main race to Jay and Wine is just a question of Jig and Sound have... It's kind of races like this where there are 14 entered and Jig and Sound have more than half of them that it's, it kind of shows you the stranglehold that certain, I suppose, owners and connections have. But I, if Balco de Flo runs, I imagine he will take the beating. Um, and it's, it's a great place to go racing Down Royal as well if, if you could get up there on the Saturday. Um, I recognise all the names from the racing at Down Royal on Saturday. So some of them are ex Cheltenham, some of them are looking towards Cheltenham, some of them. Yeah, Shattered Love could be coming back. Um, obviously, Mona Lee, these are horses who ran blinders last year in Novice Company and the Storyteller, Ditto, and that's only the Grade 2 second season novice race. Um, so it's, and it's a cracking racetrack. I know. The future of the racetrack's been put up in the air, which is really, I think it's one of the most indispensable racetracks in the country because it's very near Belfast and they always get crowds up there and it's actually a very good track as well, like probably a better jumps track. The flat track is very sharp, but um, it, they, they get, it's a great atmosphere up there. The two Northern Irish tracks do a great job in terms of attracting people racing and uh, it'd be an absolute tragedy if Down Royal went away, so I, I, I do hope that gets sorted as well. And they're great. Five furlong track there. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. It's yeah. very special. It's five furlong. The the two mile start stands starts in front of the stand. Yeah. Do you know it's a wonderful, wonderful track, and yeah. we desperate to lose it. You know? Are you mad into sprints? Did you just make the decision that like the the Man United of Ireland is going? Oh no, 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 no. I'm just saying because like I mean we have very few five furlong sprint tracks in Ireland. Yeah. But Down Ryle are one of them. There's only Down Ryle, Navin, um, uh, Cork, uh, uh, Bellustown, and the Curra. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The rest of them don't have five furlong tracks. So, so there are not five furlong races. No, and and it's a it's a it's a kinky little track to win on because you have to have a horse who's you know there's a sharp end on it. They run off the bend, they lose the race. You know, it's a very special little track where yeah. horses um, might win in, in the current, they wouldn't win in Down Royal. You know, it's downhill, it can be very, very fast. Do you train sprinters much different to, say, seven furlong horse? Uh, you, 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 look, sprinters get themselves fit. They're, just, they're, they're like, just um, they're the Usain Bolt, of, of, they carry a lot more condition. You just have to keep them happy. And, and the, the, mo the more problems, the problems you'll have with sprinters is carrying the weight. Mm. Do, they get, do they get injuries through carrying weight mm. more so than anything? Whereas the, the distance horses, are like the, the distance runners to carry no weight and they're lighter, they're easier to keep sound, you know. Mm. If we gave you a blank piece of paper and said fix the, the issues that you were talking about earlier, what would you do most? Um, well, I, I, I'd try seriously hard to get more people racing. I think I'd love to see more people racing, whether we, we go around to schools or go around, I don't know how, 
we have to get more people racing. And that's I said, a massive then, challenge. Then that's our future, land. Because it's not. I love. I love racing. I love competing. We have a great camaraderie amongst trainers. We all love each other, but hate each other yeah. because we're all trying to beat each other. Yeah. But that's the thing. The jockeys, as you know, they all get on. They all compete. But like, we just same face as racing. You know, it's exciting when you go racing and there's a full, when they when the, when the, you know, go to Leperstown and the Cora Champions Weekend and the place is full. And what, what makes you it know. harder as well is with smartphones now, our attention span is worse than ever. Yes. And to have a 30, 35 minute gap between races where there's not a lot going on, it's going to make that challenge ever harder um, with TV coverage and all that. But we have to be inventive in terms of yeah. making it a real, making it incentive to go there. Um, and I've, I've actually spoken to somebody in HRI about a possible idea about making it um, appealing in terms of information that you get only if you go racing. Um, and I know HRI is working on it because I couldn't agree more with Willie. It's... I, I, I still enjoy going racing. I maybe don't go as much as I should, but um, I know the amount of people I know who are hardcore gamblers who don't go racing. Mm. And that's what I, I can't get my head around, and we need to change that. But you're missing out on the enjoyable bit. Yeah, well, no, it's, see, it's, yeah, yeah. And, and ownership as well. Yeah. Like ownership to be able to be just the, 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 the crack of owning a horse with your mates and to go racing then and to be in that parade ring with, with uh, Eddie O'Leary, Michael O'Leary, or even mm. you might even be in there with JP McManus or even um, the Magners someday because you're that there. That racing club idea is, is the type of Absolutely. thing that makes that accessible. And, and, and there's, there's, there is a current racing club, and this is another part of it that they. they there was 50 guys involved in that racing club this year and they'd be all racing and they'd be racing like I mean um, Michael O'Callaghan's filly raced all over the country because she's a, um, a handicapper whereas my filly was uh, kind of in the cosmopolitan tracks was like the fairy house uh, Le- uh, Nace um, where else she raced Navin and she raced in Newbury but, and the Curl but like I mean they, they get to go like if you have a handicapper in Ireland yeah. you get to see the whole of Ireland yeah do you know what I mean? And yeah, which is great. And like, there's some. I love going to Sligo. Like, Sligo is a wonderful mm. track, and certain horses only win there. We have a great variety of tracks here. That it's not like America. That's the every one thing. Sing, yeah. Every sing, America, they all race left-handed. All, every track, the dirt track, is a mile from start. One round. I didn't finish. That, so it's all exactly mm. the same. It's all exactly the same. Like, Don yeah. Patrick and Navin couldn't be less yeah. similar. And, and, and every track in Ireland is totally different. Like, right? like uh, um, where do you call um, over in the very west there? Um, Ballon Robe, Ballon yeah. Robe. A horse that win in Ballon Robe won't win anywhere yeah. else because the stable yard is behind the winning post. Yeah. Mm. So they'll gallop back to the winning post. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Gorn, the stable yard is before the winning post. So you'll see a lot of horses jib. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, you know, like, and, and all this kind of characteristics you need to know in a horse where you're going to place them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's wonderful. Like Irish racing is the best in the world. Well, I think that like having conversations about that level of strategy is the stuff that interest people that gets people mm. kind of going ooh I didn't know that yeah. what's more likely you to win a classic or Kildare to win all Ireland in your lifetime me to win a classic <laughs> <laughs> I can't trust 15 <laughs> <laughs> well look at I, I think no I think look at our, our underage development and our underage teams are doing very well that's hope Ger yeah. would you get involved again you were a selector for a year I was selector for a year but I wasn't training then like I mean you can't if you're not going to commit to a team 200% you can't go half hours and when you finish training when you retire you might yeah. come back yeah in the Zimmer no it's totally different my, my nephew told me I don't want to have a clue about football it's totally different football now right. so don't be talking about it <laughs> so. you're getting old you're getting old the game has passed you by exactly oh, no. Johnny uh, you did okay you're, you're the only guy man we'd allow in the studio for this exactly Willie really, thanks yeah, very much no, it was great pleasure pleasure that's Friday Night Racing. I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, missed any of it, you can get it all back on youtube.com forward slash off the ball. And stay tuned to our social accounts and to the tote as well. Their social will tweet out the details of our second bet as well. Thanks a million. Friday Night Racing on Off the Ball. And they're off. Brought to you by Go Racing. Plan your day at the races at goracing.ie.